Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome to this, our celebration of the third Sunday of Advent, also known as Gaudete Sunday. We remind you at this time to please silence your cell phones so as not to disturb our proceedings. This weekend, we are happy to welcome a special guest celebrant and homilist, Father Luc Leter. And our entrance him. Excuse me. Our entrance him this afternoon in the spirit of Gaudete. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. This is the day. Indeed, the Lord is near. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm so happy to be with you. My name is Father Luke Layton, and uh, Father, Father Kingsley and I have been friends since seminary, and he heard that I was moving soon, and he said, well, you have to come to St. Clair's before you move. So I'm, I'm so glad he extended the invitation to me, and I could be here with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Today we wear rose-colored vestments. We're on the third candle of our Advent wreath. It seems like it's going so quickly, doesn't it? And this is all this joy that the Lord is indeed near, that he's close to us. That's what we celebrate. And for the times when we say, Lord, you're a little too close. <laughs> I need a little more space, and we push back a little bit. That's why every time we start Mass, we have this penitential rite. We say, Lord, I extended my arms Come closer again. So let us now acknowledge our sins and invite the Lord very near. Mm. 
Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Today's Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray to attain the joys of so great a salvation, and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and the day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. For he had clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride, Bedeck with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and the garden makes its growth sprungs up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all nations. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul's to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in all circumstance give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirits. Do not despise prophetic utterance. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy and may you entirely spirit, soul, on body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. And, and what do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Who are you? They asked John. Who are you? It's an evocative question. I think we spend most of our lives trying to answer that question. Who am I? Who am I? Not superficially, not the thing that other people notice when they evaluate me and they look at me, but who am I? It's a good question. It's one that we're all trying to answer. And I would dare say it's one that we cannot answer outside of our relationship with God. Our relationship is God, with God is in fact the very thing that gives us the depths of our identity of who we are. From that relationship, we, we come to know that we are beloved sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. And from that identity that we know from our relationship, we then know our mission, what I'm called to do in this world. And we see that in John. His life, lived out of relationship with God, told him, I am one who is meant to cry out, one who is meant to be a voice to prepare the way for one who will come. From relationship, he knew his identity and he could live his mission. 
I have this unique experience right now. Um, the very fact that Father Daniel felt, um, or Father Kingsley felt uh, it, the need to invite me soon <laughs> to come and, and celebrate Mass here at his parish, at, at your parish, is that I'm moving soon. <laughs> so there was an insistence, a, a, a need for it to happen now. And it feels like that to me. Have you ever moved and it feels like it's a long way away until all of a sudden it's right there? <laughs> and that's how it feels for me. It, back in the spring, I heard that I was going to move to our new friary, our new mission in Oakland, California. And I grew up in New Jersey. My dad's from Long Island. My mom's from Connecticut. I've lived in New York City as a Franciscan for the last 16 years. I'm an East Coast kind of guy. <laughs> and I'm going to move to the West Coast. Um, I heard that in the spring, and it felt like it was so far away. And COVID was happening, and the house that we're moving into, the, the construction got delayed, and so it, it kept getting put off, and now it's here. <laughs> I'm moving on January 3rd. We're going to drive cross-country. We're going to drive 10 days, and it's going to be great. We're going to drive down and visit uh, one of the brothers' families in Tennessee, and then we're going to go up and see one of the former friars um, that I know very well in Kansas, and then visit my brother in, in Colorado, and it's going to be wonderful. I'm really looking forward to it. And what I'm experiencing in this, this process of getting ready to move and saying goodbye to people and packing things up is that I'm being called to something, that there's something out there that's waiting for me, and I don't know what it is yet. Sure, I'm, I'm concerned about leaving behind my mom, <laughs> you know, leaving behind friends and, and relationships that I've grown in as a priest, uh, young people who I've seen grow up from being little kids to now being 20 years old. Um, so I'm worried about that. But all the same, I feel peace because I know God is calling me to something. There's something that my life is meant to open up out into that I have yet to discover. And again, it, it has something to do with answering that question, who am I? That identity question. Well, if at the depths of my identity, I know my identity, identity because of my relationship with the Father, I know that it's true here in New York that I'm a beloved son of God, and when I get to Oakland, what will be true is that I'm a beloved son of God. The location is not what's important, it's the relationship. That's the home that I'm meant to live out of. And what's really beautiful is, if I, if I have the peace to live out of that home, the confidence to live out of that security, I'm going to be taken up into the mission of the church in some mysterious and powerful way. Like, what does God want to do with our little Franciscan community when we get to Oakland? I think the bishop has these big dreams. I don't think any of the stuff he's thinking about is going to happen. <laughs> he's saying like, oh, the friars are going to come, they're going to open up a facility for alcoholics. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> you know, they're going to they're gonna solve homelessness. I also, I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. <laughs> but what can we do? Live out our relationship being t and get taken up into the mission of the church to bring hope, to bring the love of God, to let people know that they're cared for and loved. I think that could happen. And brothers and sisters, I, I, I share that with you just about my own life because it's, it's what's happening right now. <laughs> and I'm confident that right now there's something happening for you. 2020 has been filled with stuff happening, <laughs> right? We all have experienced a lot. John talks about preparing the way. Does it feel sometimes, like this year, like we just want to say to God, like, Lord, I know in Psalm 139 you say you go before and you follow after, but did you go before this year? <laughs> like, did you prepare the way for this one? Because it doesn't necessarily feel like that, you know? I'm, a lot of uncertainties. I think it, this season we need it so much, Advent, for hope. Okay, let's, let's be really honest with God and say, Lord, I wasn't so sure about that thing or this thing that happened this year. But I'm going to let that become part of the conversation now, the intimacy I share with you and say, Lord, that was really difficult. I lost that person in my life. That seemed useless to me. I want to talk to you about that. 
Lord, I'm not so sure about what happened with my, my son's job. Now, why, did, why do you have to become unemployed, Lord? I want to talk to you about that. What, whatever your stuff is, whatever the things that happen during this year are, let's bring that to God. Let's ask him, Lord, where were you in that? Uh, as an act of faith, I, I know you were there. Can you reveal yourself? Can you show yourself where you were? Can you show yourself what you were doing in my life to care for me and love me as your beloved son and daughter in that stuff that felt like it was really, really difficult and you weren't there? A friend of mine went through something very, very painful and difficult in her childhood, and she was recently telling me about it for the first time. And she said it wasn't until she was much older and she was praying through it and she was asking the Lord, Lord, where were you when that happened to me? Something very, very painful, very private. And at a time of retreat, as she was asking the Lord, Lord, where were you? She heard him say, I was waiting there in the wound. That's where I was, in the wound. Ooh. <laughs> Are there some wounds that we carry, brothers and sisters, that perhaps that's where we'll find the Lord waiting for us? Places we don't necessarily want to go, but he might be hiding right there. That's how intimate he wants to be with us. Let's think about that as, as we're in this new liturgical year, but our, our calendar year is coming to a close, and we're in this time of transition, this time of preparation for Christmas, this time of putting 2020 behind us. We say, Lord, I want everything in my life to be part of our relationship. Because I want every part of my life to be part of my identity as your beloved one. Whatever it is, Lord, that I don't understand the complexities of life, the mysteries, can you reveal yourself hidden there in the wounds of that? Maybe pray with Psalm 139 the way the Lord knows us, the way the Lord prepares for us, the way the Lord follows after to heal and to bind up. What's the stuff that needs to be healed and bound up from this year? How can we walk forward in freedom into the next year? Something I've been so moved by being here with all of you uh, during this weekend is to see people dancing during the music, to see people dancing. You know who dances? People who are free. And we are free insofar as we bring God that stuff that's unresolved. That stuff that sometimes feels like it lies outside of our relationship with him. When we recognize, no, Lord, nothing is outside of your gaze. Nothing is not caught up in the look of love you have for me. When we bring all of that stuff, we can be free. There's nothing that weighs us down over here or over here. So who are you? Who are you? God's beloved. God's beloved. And you yourself, you know, you might not be a Franciscan friar, but there's some mission that you're being taken up into. Some person in your life that because you are healed, because you are free, because you can dance, you are meant to be a light to them. You are being taken up into the very mission of God's love in this world. If you recall the story of John the Baptist, there came a time towards the end of his life when he was in prison, when he sent messengers to Jesus. Are you the one or are we meant to look for someone else? Even John was confused by the complexities of life. If you've had questions this year, that doesn't mean you have any less trust. That doesn't mean you have any less part of the mission of God. Jesus himself said of his cousin John, Born of woman, there's been none greater than John the Baptist. And John had questions. Are you the one? John's mission opened out into something more, the life of Jesus. Your life, my life, is meant to open out into something more, the life of Jesus for the sake of others. So brothers and sisters, let us be reconciled with this past year 
Let us experience the Lord in our relationship with him, loving us in everything and making us free that we can move forward into this next year, knowing that we're being taken up into the very mystery of his mission in this world to bring his hope, joy, and peace to the very people in our lives. He wants you to be free. He wants you to dance. He wants you to know your identity as his beloved sons and daughters. Amen. We have the gift now of being able to profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. John the Baptist came as a witness to speak for the light, a voice crying in the wilderness. As we prepare for the coming of that light, we ask the Father to hear our prayers. Our response after each petition, as we raise our hands, pleading expectantly, Maranatha, and ready for Christ's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That the leaders of nations may grant liberty to people who have been unjustly imprisoned. Let us pray to the Lord. the kindness of active Christians. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That we as a parish community would invite people 
to come and encounter the living Christ with us. Let us pray to the Lord. before us, especially Myrtle Moody, Glenn Miller, Roger St. Louis, Eric Nelson, and Luce Dorothy, that they may rejoice forever in the sublime presence of God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Maranatha, come, O Christ, the Lord. For our good personal petitions, which we mention in silence now, Let us pray to the Lord. Maranatha, come, o Christ, the Lord. For the particular intentions of this Mass, which is being celebrated for the people of the parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Maranatha, come, o Christ, the Lord. Almighty Father, your mercy is from age to age. You fill the starving with good things. Thus encouraged, we pray in confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, if you are live streaming, please click on the donate button at the bottom of this webpage to make your donations. Your donations are an essential part of the preparation of the gifts of Mass and is critical to the vitality of our parish. Thank you. For the preparation of gifts, our offertory hymn, The Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came. <laughs>
word of justice. Alleluia. Save your people. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he might find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Gives you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Clair, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nicholas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom Christ, who said, your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should be under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you receiving communion, please remain seated and follow the directions of the ushers. When approaching to receive communion, please keep your distance from the person in front of you. Leaving your mask on, step forward to receive the host only in your hand. Then step to the side, remove your mask to consume the host. Placing back on your mask, please return to your seats from the side aisles following social distance. Thank you. Our communion hymn, People Look East.
those of you watching Holy Mass through social media and desire to receive our Lord's body and blood but cannot do so physically, we pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Good morning, church. How are you doing today? Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I'd like to begin the announcements with notes of gratitude. First and foremost, I am overjoyed that my friend, Father Luke, graced us today with his presence, his ministry, and his preaching. Thank you, Father Luke. And as we look around our church to gaze upon the lights, the Christmas trees, the manger scene, I'm indebted today to the Rosary Altar Society as well as the Flower Guild. Thank you, guys. And moreover, to the fine leadership of Mr. Ze Michael Zephyr at the Organ Council, who led our choir yesterday in a small, uh, small uh, showing for the dedication and blessing of lights. Thank you, Mr. Zephyr and the choir. Thank you. The announcements are as follows. The annual Catholic Appeal. Please remember to continue making your pledge payments to the annual Catholic Appeal. As of today, we are just $3,137 short of our goal with just two more weeks to go into the year. You could go online at www.annualcatholicappeal.org and make a payment. Prayerfully consider making a donation to this year's annual Catholic Appeal. The youth ministry is bringing the Christmas cheer with two events. First, calling all those facing food insecurity. Next Saturday, December 19th, from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., our COVID-19 response team, in conjunction with the youth ministry, will be having a grab-and-go chicken giveaway. First come, first serve, one per family. Please wear a mask and remember to bring a bag or trolley with you. Come early and please spread the word. There will be a toy giveaway next Sunday, December 20th, at 2.30 p.m. in the School Academy parking lot. A limited number of toys, first come, first served. And the second thing that our youth ministry is doing is the prayer intention ornaments. As you can see, this lovely Christmas tree behind me is not yet decorated. Everyone is invited to write their personal intentions, which will be placed in a decorated ornament, and will hang on our Christmas tree for the entirety of the Christmas season. The intentions are a beautiful depiction for us to visually see our prayers rising to God. There is a free will offering. If you'd like to have an intention placed on an ornament this year, please see a member of our youth ministry or speak to our youth minister, Mr. Peter Demore, after Mass today or during the week. Our phone menu has changed. On calling the office, please listen to the voicemail prompt that will direct you to the extension you need. You can press one for the mass schedule, press two for the administrative assistant, or press three to speak to myself if you wish to, if you wish to. Your call will be answered in the order it was received. I heard something quite funny yesterday. 
I was told that St. Clair's will not be having midnight mass for Christmas. The reason why I thought it was funny is because I work here and no one told me that. But as far as I know, unless things change between now and the week of Christmas, we will have a 5 p.m. mass on Christmas Eve, a midnight mass on Christmas Eve, and a 10 a.m. mass on Christmas Day. Let me repeat, 5 p.m. mass on Christmas Eve, midnight mass on Christmas Eve, and last but not least, on Christmas Day, a 10 a.m. mass. So everybody heard it from the horse's mouth, right? Wonderful, great, thank you. But pivoting to a more serious announcement, I have been taking stock of the news reports I've been listening to the last few days regarding COVID-19. I'm not comfortable with the uptick of hospitalization and infection rates. I'm not trying to create fear or alert, but it's just that as the administrator, I am responsible for the safety and well-being of parishioners who come here to worship. Thus, in that spirit, beginning tomorrow, Monday, December 12th, we will begin con tact tracing here at St. Clair's. What that means is that if you attend Holy Mass here, the ushers will ask you for your name, your telephone number, and they'll ask you one or two questions. The reason being is that, God forbid, there's a COVID-19 outbreak here, the parish clergy and staff can readily call those who attend a particular Mass and say the following. Somebody was infected, we advise you to go get a rapid test for COVID-19, or at best, quarantine for the next 14 days. Again, we're not here to create alarm or panic, but as I look upon this congregation, many of you are young enough to be my father, my grandfather, my grandmother, my mother, and that some of us are at increased risk to, co to contract COVID-19 because of immune compromised immune systems, diabetes, cancer, and the like. So we're just doing this not as a draconian measure, but as a measure from overwhelming prudence. Now the question was asked of me, Father, how about if I don't want to give my name? Then maybe at this time it's best that you live stream Mass, but just as we ask everyone to come here to St. Clair's and wear a Mass during worship, if you don't want to give your name, gently we may have to simply say, maybe at this time it's best for you to live stream Mass. So if there are any questions or concerns, I will be available after Mass, or feel free to call me in the office during the week. Thank you, God bless, and please have a happy and safe Sunday. Thank you. Please stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn, brothers and sisters, Rejoice in the Lord Always. <laughs>
I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to figure out. Transferring thing over. 